Well, hey guys, my name is Natalie. This is Hey, It's a Good Life, and I'm so glad you're here. Today is another video in the series in collaboration with my friends answering your questions about how you can get started growing food even if you live in the city. We're all urban homesteaders on a mission to help as many people as we can start growing food no matter where they may find themselves. So. And today I'm sharing with you seven things you can start growing on an urban homestead. Now, before we hop into things, can I just tell you guys how you can make my 4th of July extra special? If you like, comment and subscribe to this video and this channel, and if you share it with a friend. So if you haven't done that already, I would love it if you did, because this is my second time filming this video. <laughs> I really want to bring you guys awesome content that's entertaining and funny and educational and I just didn't feel like the first video did it justice and I pulled a muscle in my butt. Yes, I pulled a glute muscle. Like how do you even do that? But no excuses. I want good content for you guys. And so I'm out here filming this again and it would seriously make my day if you liked, commented and subscribed and, and let me know what you're up to for the 4th of July or comment your favorite emoji or something. Just, just so I know that I'm actually talking to humans and not just this camera lens. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. That would be an awesome 4th of July present. Thank you in advance. <laughs> All right, so as you can imagine, having just built this mobile DIY greenhouse on wheels, one of my favorite suggestions is going to be plants. Um, if you wanna see the video how I built that, I'll link it up above here. And if you guys want plans, let me know. My husband is happy to draft them up in CAD and add them to our website. Starting things from seed, you can grow so many wonderful, interesting varieties that you can't really find in the stores or at nurseries. And so my number one choice for what can you start growing on an urban homestead are heirloom seeds or just cool seeds that you've never heard of. And then if you've got some kind of a system with a greenhouse or some kind of shelving unit, you can start selling those plants to your friends and neighbors, people on Facebook marketplace, and even start a little homestead side hustle for yourself. So point number one, start your own plants from seed. See if you can't start your own plants for your garden and have enough to share or even sell with your neighbors. Oh my gosh, it's hot out here today. I have a very special plant growing in here actually that I can show you and it will be our point number two. Right here, I've got some tropical milkweed and some of you might know what this attracts to the garden. If you know, comment down below right now. Did you leave your comment? Do you know what it does? It attracts monarchs. So some of you guys know that I love raising monarchs. Am I super great at it? No, I'm learning every year as it goes by. But this year I've started my own milkweed from seed because I ran out of milkweed last year. Those are hungry little buggers. But if you have any interest in helping the monarch situation or even just watching the process of growing monarchs, it is a wonderful activity. Like I absolutely love it. My husband absolutely loves it. And it's a great activity for kids too. And it's something that we hope to pass down to our children one day. So if you want to grow something kind of cool, something that your kids might be into, I highly recommend growing your own milkweed or buying from a local nursery, just make sure it hasn't been sprayed with any pesticides or anything. And when you grow milkweed, you'll bring monarchs to the garden and you can watch them transform. A really, really cool process and 10 out of 10 would recommend to a friend. Not even in focus. Whoops, how are we gonna make this work? Hello? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, now point number three and potentially the most obvious answer to what can I grow on an urban homestead is food. Yes, I grow a lot of food here on our urban homestead. Am I really great at it yet? No. Am I getting better every season that goes by? Yes. Now I have a confession to make. Behind us is about nine different plants, cucumbers and melons. And I came out here the other day and I scared myself with what I saw growing on the vine. Right behind me is my first ever cucumber. I've never grown a cucumber before. And to just see it like pop up practically overnight, I was like, <gasps> I have a cucumber. Actually, what I said was, oh my God, I have a pickle. <laughs> it's a cucumber. It's a cucumber. Pickles are cucumbers before they're pickles. So anyway, there's that. <laughs> um, and so point number three, grow food. It's super fun. It's amazing to see the process, the pollination that's required, just the whole thing from seed to end of plant and harvest. It's a really amazing thing to watch. It is one of the main reasons why I homestead and why I've decided to start growing food in the city is because I wanna know where my food comes from and I wanna learn to be a little bit more self-reliant every year that goes by. And eventually we wanna have a regenerative farm and retreat center. And this is part of how I steward that dream. 
Growing food is part of how I steward that dream. So point number three, grow food. It's really fun. It'll teach you a lot and might even get some really cool fruit and veg out of it. All right, and point number three is grow edible flowers. You can grow edible flowers so easily on an urban homestead. And for me in zone 10 here in San Diego, California, well, <laughs> nasturtium grow like a weed. And nasturtiums can be eaten from petal to stem to leaf to seed. The whole thing is edible. You can add these little flowers to a salad. You can add their leaves to a salad. You can also pickle the seeds that I just picked, and those are known as poor man's caviar. Not really something that I'm interested in trying, but I thought I would let you guys know that it is a thing, and if you wanna try it, oops, well, that is something to try. You can also eat the flowers. The flowers taste pretty bland, but the leaves kind of remind me of like wasabi or horseradish or like arugula. Um, a really, really interesting flavor. And I just love that something that can attract pollinators and bees and butterflies and hummingbirds is also something that I can enjoy, enjoy on a salad or add as a cake topper. So I think nasturtium are a really interesting edible flower to grow, but there are many kinds of edible flowers to grow out there. And so I would encourage you to do the research and consider growing some edible flowers. I've got a couple things growing out here right now that kind of look like aliens, but let me tell you why I have let them get so gangly and weird looking. So this is Merlot lettuce, and you may have seen in some of my other videos that I let this go to seed or bolt or flower or whatever you want to call it. I let it do its thing in the heat because I wanted to save the seeds. And if I were to pull one of these little fuzzies off, a bunch of seeds would come falling out. And what's really cool about allowing your plants to become mature enough to produce seeds is then you can turn around and sell those seeds or you can turn around and save those seeds and grow them year after year and adapt some of your favorite varieties to your local climate. Something you may not know about me is I was actually married into a family with a history of seeds. The Haven Seed Company was my husband's great grandfather's company and it was one of the first seed companies to settle in this area in Southern California, um, Orange County to be more precise. And they had a phenomenal operation with many things that Grandpa Haven built himself from the honeycomb walls to the conveyor belts. Uh, Tommy's grandma likes to tell stories about riding on the conveyor belts and swinging from the rope in the barn. Um, and she even told us a story once about smoking corn husk, although I'm probably not allowed to share that story here. Not that corn husk is like illegal, but anyway, a risky Grandma Armstrong story. <laughs> Anyway, all that to say, like seeds hold a very special place in my heart. They always have, they always will. It was one of the first science experiments that I ever did well on as a kid. And now a part of a family that has this really rich seed history in Southern California. And so honestly, I dream one day of restarting that legacy. And that is a huge reason why I save seeds. All right, and we're actually at a little part of the garden that I rarely ever show you guys, but this is the best it's looked in like all year and a half of living here. Now what I'm about to show you is what I would consider my livestock. And I put it in quotes because you're about to find out that it's not really anything that cool, but it makes me a lot of compost for my garden and I highly recommend it for anybody who wants to get started composting. So we're doing it. I'm taking you in the dog run, okay? Behold, this is the glory of the dog run. And when I say behold the glory, I mean there's not a lot of glory to behold and I'm kind of scared of like stepping on a mouse, but <sighs> but for you guys, I will brave the dog run. And why are we back here? Because this is where I keep my worms. This is my worm farm. This is where I keep my worm farm and this is what fuels my garden. Worm castings are an incredible source of nutrients for your garden. And if you're looking for a small space solution to composting on your own in a way that's easy, doesn't take up a lot of space, goes relatively quickly and is pretty much smell free, well, vermicomposting is for you. And it's great for urban homesteading because it doesn't take up a lot of space and it can be done on a budget and it doesn't smell like the list goes on and on. And I'm actually in the process of finishing my vermicomposting ebook 
I've been working on it a little while. I decided to scrap the whole thing because I was making it way too complex and very soon here I will be able to offer you guys a vermin composting guide. So if that's something that you're interested in, check the links down below. You can sign up to get your copy when it's available, hopefully this month. Come on, Natalie, like get it together. That is my worm farm. Happy to share it with you guys. And I think it's a great way for any urban homesteader to start making their own compost at home. And that my friends concludes our dog run worm tour. I actually built this gate. I'm like super impressed with myself that I built this. <sighs> Please don't disqualify yourself from building things, whether you're a newbie, you're a woman, you're young, whatever it may be. Like I have learned so much just by applying myself and failing and getting back up and trying again. And look at this gate. Don't look at that extension cord. Look at this gate. Look, I'll just cover it up with my shoulder. <laughs> We have a gate and this is what keeps the cats out of the dog run. Now, this gate would be additionally helpful if I kept other things back here. Some other great options, and you'll see this in other videos with my collaborators, are quail or chicken or rabbits. Those are all great small space livestock solutions. So if you're looking for a way to compost your food scraps or get more compost in your garden, any of those options do great in small spaces on urban homesteads and would make a great addition to any urban homestead. Rabbits, chickens, quail, great urban homesteading animals and livestock. Oh yeah, and worms. Don't tell the worms I forgot them. And last but not least, grow medicinal herbs on your urban homestead. Growing your own herbs is a great way to familiarize yourself with natural medicine and diversify your garden. Biodiversity is huge in maintaining a healthy ecosystem in your garden, but also check out how beautiful this is. This is yarrow. This is native to our area, or at least this variety is. Its silvery leaves and its yellow buds are really lovely for our pollinator garden, but they offer an additional benefit of having medicinal qualities. Now, am I an expert on growing your own medicine just yet? Uh, no, I've just started this year, but so far I've started saving calendula, which is great for making healing balms and salves, and now yarrow, which I'll be able to save as well and make lots of healing goodies out of it too. So I definitely recommend try growing some medicinal herbs on your urban homestead. I think it will serve you very well. And just a quick note on medicinal herbs, I'm no expert. I get a lot of my information like you guys from YouTube and from friends and some friends of mine, Mike and Lacey Dixon over at The Fit Farmer just came out with a really great video on using medicinal herbs. It was really, really thorough. And I learned there that you can actually use every single part of yarrow and save it. Um, so if you're looking for more information, I definitely go check out that video. I'll link it up above. Another great resource is Amy Fuel of the Fuel Homestead. She's got some books uh, available right now and some books that are coming out in the near future. Um, so stay tuned for more info on that. But yeah, those are two great resources if you're looking for information on medicinal herbs and growing healing things in the garden. <sighs> like that nice big pile of debris I haven't picked up. We'll just... Oh my gosh, what giant pile of debris are you talking about? There's nothing there. You totally didn't just sweep that off camera so people wouldn't see it. Yeah, it totally didn't just happen. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to the end of the video. If you made it this far, I am applauding you. Thank you for hanging out with me today in the garden. And I hope this video encourages you to get started growing something on an urban homestead. Whether you're in the city, whether you're on an apartment patio, whether you're in the suburbs, like you can absolutely get started growing something, whether that's food, medicinal herbs, butterflies. There are lots of things that we can be cultivating here in the earth. And I'm a firm believer that it is part of our calling as humans to cultivate good things. And that's part of why my name here is Hey, It's a Good Life. So thank you for hanging out with me here at Hey, It's a Good Life today. And I hope this video is encouraging to you, whether you're young or new, limited on space, limited on time, don't have the skills or know-how. Listen, I'm only at this, I've only been at this like two years and we're doing it. We're figuring it out day by day. I make lots of mistakes all the time. And I just keep going because I'm dedicated to this mission of our regenerative farm and retreat center. And I'm believing that this is good stewardship, learning as we go, stewarding each stepping stone home that we're in. I think it's a good thing. So hope this video encourages you. If you want garden plans, check out the website. I'll link everything that we talked about down below. Um, and if you want to know a little bit more about this regenerative farm dream that I talk about a lot in my videos, I will also link to a blog post 
that I wrote for an organization that I work for. Um, I sent them a redacted version because it was a little too long for their taste, uh, but the original version is on my website and it really kind of just goes into depth of like my heart for regenerative farming and why I care about it, why I do what I do and um, how I believe it really is the hope of the future. So anyway, if you want to go check that out, I'll link it down below as well. You can check it out at heyitsagoodlife.com, my blog. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for hanging out with me today. It's been great to be with you guys and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.